something utterly unexpected and amazing to mitya followed he could never even a minute before have conceived that anyone could behave like that to him mitya karamazov what was worst of all there was something humiliating in it and on their side something supercilious and scornful it was nothing to take off his coat but he was asked to undress further or rather not asked but commanded he quite understood that from pride and contempt he submitted without a word several peasants accompanied the lawyers and remained on the same side of the curtain to be ready if force is required thought mitya and perhaps for some other reason too well must i take off my shirt too he asked sharply but nikolai parfenovitch did not answer he was busily engaged with the prosecutor in examining the coat the trousers the waistcoat and the cap and it was evident that they were both much interested in the scrutiny they make no bones about it thought mitya they don't keep up the most elementary politeness i ask you for the second time need i take off my shirt or not he said still more sharply and irritably don't trouble yourself we will tell you what to do nikolai parfenovitch said and his voice was positively peremptory or so it seemed to mitya meantime a consultation was going on in undertones between the lawyers there turned out to be on the coat especially on the left side at the back a huge patch of blood dry and still stiff there were bloodstains on the trousers too nikolai parfenovitch moreover in the presence of the peasant witnesses passed his fingers along the collar the cuffs and all the seams of the coat and trousers obviously looking for something money of course he didn't even hide from mitya his suspicion that he was capable of sewing money up in his clothes he treats me not as an officer but as a thief mitya muttered to himself they communicated their ideas to one another with amazing frankness the secretary for instance who was also behind the curtain fussing about and listening called nikolai parfenovitch's attention to the cap which they were also fingering you remember grijenko the copying clerk observed the secretary last summer he received the wages of the whole office and pretended to have lost the money when he was drunk and where was it found why in just such pipings in his cap the hundred rouble notes were screwed up in little rolls and sewed in the piping both the lawyers remembered grijenko's case perfectly and so laid aside mitch's cap and decided that all his clothes must be more thoroughly examined later excuse me cried nikolai parfenovitch suddenly noticing that the right cuff of mitch's shirt was turned in and covered with blood excuse me what's that blood yes mitya jerked out that is what blood and why is the cuff turned in mitya told him how he had got the sleeve stained with blood looking after grigory and had turned it inside when he was washing his hands at perhotin's you must take off your shirt too that's very important as material evidence mitya flushed red and flew into a rage what am i to stay naked he shouted don't disturb yourself we will arrange something and meanwhile take off your socks you're not joking is that really necessary mitch's eyes flashed we are in no mood for joking answered nikolai parfenovitch sternly well if i must muttered mitya and sitting down on the bed he took off his socks he felt unbearably awkward all were clothed while he was naked and strange to say when he was undressed he felt somehow guilty in their presence and was almost ready to believe himself that he was inferior to them and that now they had a perfect right to despise him when all are undressed one is somehow not ashamed but when one's the only one undressed and everybody is looking it's degrading he kept repeating to himself again and again it's like a dream i've sometimes dreamed of being in such degrading positions it was a misery to him to take off his socks they were very dirty and so were his underclothes and now everyone could see it and what was worse he disliked his feet 
all his life he had thought both his big toes hideous he particularly loathed the coarse flat crooked nail on the right one and now they would all see it feeling intolerably ashamed made him at once and intentionally rougher he pulled off his shirt himself would you like to look anywhere else if you're not ashamed to no there's no need to at present well am i to stay naked like this he added savagely yes that can't be helped for the time kindly sit down here for a while you can wrap yourself in a quilt from the bed and i i'll see to all this all the things were shown to the witnesses the report of the search was drawn up and at last nikolai parfenovitch went out and the clothes were carried out after him Ippolit Kirillevitch went out too. Mitya was left alone with the peasants, who stood in silence, never taking their eyes off him. Mitya wrapped himself up in the quilt. He felt cold, his bare feet stuck out, and he couldn't pull the quilt over so as to cover them. Nikolai Parfenovitch seemed to be gone a long time, an insufferable time. He thinks of me as a puppy, thought Mitya, gnashing his teeth that rotten prosecutor has gone too contemptuous no doubt it disgusts him to see me naked mitya imagined however that his clothes would be examined and returned to him but what was his indignation when nikolai parfenovitch came back with quite different clothes brought in behind him by a peasant here are clothes for you he observed airily, seeming well satisfied with the success of his mission. Mr. Kalganov has kindly provided these for this unusual emergency, as well as a clean shirt. Luckily he had them all in his trunk. You can keep your own socks and underclothes. Mitya flew into a passion. I won't have other people's clothes, he shouted menacingly. Give me my own. It's impossible. Give me my own damn Kalganov and his clothes too it was a long time before they could persuade him but they succeeded somehow in quieting him down they impressed upon him that his clothes being stained with blood must be included with the other material evidence and that they had not even the right to let him have them now taking into consideration the possible outcome of the case mitya at last understood this he subsided into gloomy silence and hurriedly dressed himself he merely observed as he put them on that the clothes were much better than his old ones and that he disliked gaining by the change the coat was besides ridiculously tight am i to be dressed up like a fool for your amusement they urged upon him again that he was exaggerating that kalganov was only a little taller so that only the trousers might be a little too long but the coat turned out to be really tight in the shoulders damn it all i can hardly button it mitya grumbled be so good as to tell mr kalganov from me that i didn't ask for his clothes and it's not my doing that they've dressed me up like a clown he understands that and is sorry i mean not sorry to lend you his clothes but sorry about all this business mumbled nikolai parfenovitch confound his sorrow well where now am i to go on sitting here he was asked to go back to the other room mitya went in scowling with anger and trying to avoid looking at anyone dressed in another man's clothes he felt himself disgraced even in the eyes of the peasants and of trifon borisovitch whose face appeared for some reason in the doorway and vanished immediately he's come to look at me dressed up thought mitya he sat down on the same chair as before he had an absurd nightmarish feeling as though he were out of his mind well what now are you going to flog me that's all that's left for you he said clenching his teeth and addressing the prosecutor he would not turn to nikolai parfenovitch as though he disdained to speak to him he looked too closely at my socks and turned them inside out on purpose to show everyone how dirty they were the scoundrel 
well now we must proceed to the examination of witnesses observed nikolai parfenovitch as though in reply to mitch's question yes said the prosecutor thoughtfully as though reflecting on something we've done what we could in your interest dmitri fyodorovitch nikolai parfenovitch went on but having received from you such an uncompromising refusal to explain to us the source from which you obtained the money found upon you we are at the present moment what is the stone in your ring mitya interrupted suddenly as though awakening from a reverie he pointed to one of the three large rings adorning nikolai parfenovitch's right hand ring repeated nikolai parfenovitch with surprise yes that one on your middle finger with the little veins in it what stone is that mitya persisted like a peevish child that's a smoky topaz said nikolai parfenovitch smiling would you like to look at it i'll take it off no don't take it off cried mitya furiously suddenly waking up and angry with himself don't take it off there's no need damn it gentlemen you've sullied my heart can you suppose that i would conceal it from you if i had really killed my father that i would shuffle lie and hide myself no that's not like dmitri karamazov that he couldn't do and if i were guilty i swear i shouldn't have waited for your coming or for the sunrise as i meant at first but should have killed myself before this without waiting for the dawn i know that about myself now i couldn't have learnt so much in twenty years as i found out in this accursed night and should i have been like this on this night and at this moment sitting with you could i have talked like this could i have moved like this could i have looked at you and at the world like this if i had really been the murderer of my father when the very thought of having accidentally killed grigory gave me no peace all night not from fear oh not simply from fear of your punishment the disgrace of it and you expect me to be open with such scoffers as you who see nothing and believe in nothing blind moles and scoffers and to tell you another nasty thing i've done another disgrace even if that would save me from your accusation no better siberia the man who opened the door to my father and went in at that door he killed him he robbed him who was he i'm racking my brains and can't think who but i can tell you it was not dmitri karamazov and that's all i can tell you and that's enough enough leave me alone exile me punish me but don't bother me any more i'll say no more call your witnesses mitya uttered his sudden monologue as though he were determined to be absolutely silent for the future the prosecutor watched him the whole time and only when he had ceased speaking observed as though it were the most ordinary thing with the most frigid and composed air oh about the open door of which you spoke just now we may as well inform you by the way now of a very interesting piece of evidence of the greatest importance both to you and to us that has been given us by grigory the old man you wounded on his recovery he clearly and emphatically stated in reply to our questions that when on coming out to the steps and hearing a noise in the garden he made up his mind to go into it through the little gate which stood open before he noticed you running as you have told us already in the dark from the open window where you saw your father he grigory glanced to the left and while noticing the open window observed at the same time much nearer to him the door standing wide open that door which you have stated to have been shut the whole time you were in the garden i will not conceal from you that grigory himself confidently affirms and bears witness that you must have run from that door though of course he did not see you do so with his own eyes since he only noticed you first some distance away in the garden running towards the fence Mitya had leapt up from his chair halfway through this speech. Nonsense! he yelled in a sudden frenzy. It's a barefaced lie. He couldn't have seen the door open because it was shut. He's lying. 
i consider it my duty to repeat that he is firm in his statement he does not waver he adheres to it we've cross-examined him several times precisely i have cross-examined him several times nikolai parfenovitch confirmed warmly it's false false it's either an attempt to slander me or the hallucination of a madman mitya still shouted he's simply raving from loss of blood from the wound he must have fancied it when he came to he's raving yes but he noticed the open door not when he came to after his injuries but before that as soon as he went into the garden from the lodge but it's false it's false it can't be so he's slandering me from spite he couldn't have seen it i didn't come from the door gasped mitya the prosecutor turned to nikolai parfenovitch and said to him impressively confront him with it do you recognize this object nikolai parfenovitch laid upon the table a large and thick official envelope on which three seals still remained intact the envelope was empty and slit open at one end mitya stared at it with open eyes it it must be that envelope of my father's the envelope that contained the three thousand roubles and if there's inscribed on it allow me for my little chicken yes three thousand he shouted do you see three thousand do you see of course we see but we didn't find the money in it it was empty and lying on the floor by the bed behind the screen for some seconds mitya stood as though thunderstruck gentlemen it's smerdyakov he shouted suddenly at the top of his voice it's he who's murdered him he's robbed him no one else knew where the old man hid the envelope it's smerdyakov that's clear now but you too knew of the envelope and that it was under the pillow i never knew it i've never seen it this is the first time i've looked at it i'd only heard of it from smerdyakov he was the only one who knew where the old man kept it hidden i didn't know mitchell was completely breathless but you told us yourself that the envelope was under your deceased father's pillow you especially stated that it was under the pillow so you must have known it we've got it written down confirmed nikolai parfenovitch nonsense it's absurd i'd no idea it was under the pillow and perhaps it wasn't under the pillow at all it was just a chance guess that it was under the pillow what does smerdyakov say have you asked him where it was what does smerdyakov say that's the chief point and i went out of my way to tell lies against myself i told you without thinking that it was under the pillow and now you oh you know how one says the wrong thing without meaning it no one knew but smerdyakov only smerdyakov and no one else he didn't even tell me where it was but it's his doing his doing there's no doubt about it he murdered him that's as clear as daylight now mitya exclaimed more and more frantically repeating himself incoherently and growing more and more exasperated and excited you must understand that and arrest him at once he must have killed him while i was running away and while grigory was unconscious that's clear now he gave the signal and father opened to him for no one but he knew the signal and without the signal father would never have opened the door but you're again forgetting the circumstance the prosecutor observed still speaking with the same restraint though with a note of triumph that there was no need to give the signal if the door already stood open when you were there while you were in the garden the door the door muttered mitya and he stared speechless at the prosecutor he sank back helpless in his chair all were silent yes the door it's a nightmare god is against me he exclaimed staring before him in complete stupefaction come you see the prosecutor went on with dignity and you can judge for yourself dmitri fyodorovitch 
on the one hand we have the evidence of the open door from which you ran out a fact which overwhelms you and us on the other side your incomprehensible persistent and so to speak obdurate silence with regard to the source from which you obtained the money which was so suddenly seen in your hands when only three hours earlier on your own showing you pledged your pistols for the sake of ten roubles in view of all these facts judge for yourself what are we to believe and what can we depend upon and don't accuse us of being frigid cynical scoffing people who are incapable of believing in the generous impulses of your heart try to enter into our position mitchell was indescribably agitated he turned pale very well he exclaimed suddenly i will tell you my secret i'll tell you where i got the money i'll reveal my shame that i may not have to blame myself or you hereafter and believe me dmitri fyodorovitch put in nikolai parfenovitch in a voice of almost pathetic delight that every sincere and complete confession on your part at this moment may later on have an immense influence in your favour and may indeed moreover but the prosecutor gave him a slight shove under the table and he checked himself in time mitya it is true had not heard him 